Okay, let's talk about bulk modulus. Bulk modulus is another type of modulus that we measure for solid materials, but we'll also measure this one for liquids and gases. Bulk modulus is associated with a volume strain. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our object and we're going to increase the pressure and we're going to push on it in all directions. All directions. And this is going to in indicate a decrease in its volume because if we're pushing on it, it's going to get smaller. So as with all moduli, we'll define the bulk modulus as the pressure that we applied divided by the fractional change in volume. Now this is a little bit of an issue because we said if we apply pressure, the volume is going to get smaller. So if the top is positive, then the bottom is going to be negative. And I don't want to define this thing as a negative number. So I'm going to give myself a minus sign. We can do that because we're the ones that are defining the quantity in the first place. So we'll give ourselves this minus sign here. And then we'll write down delta P over fractional change in volume. That's the change in volume over the volume, giving ourselves a minus sign again. And then over here, we'll write it in the way that you'll usually see it in the books. Now, sometimes this is called K instead of B, but I like B, so I'm going to use B. All right. So this bulk modulus is the pressure that's associated with a given decrease in volume. So the way that you'll usually see this quantity in a problem in a physics class is you'll be asked to determine how much pressure is required to accomplish a 1% decrease in volume or a 5% decrease in volume. And all we'll need to do to determine the answer to that is look over here at a table of bulk moduli. So we've got a table here, material, and then the bulk modulus. Now, as with all moduli, the bulk modulus is measured in pascals, but it's a really, 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 really big number. I mean, for steel, it's going to take a lot of pressure for me to change the volume of steel. So for that reason, I don't want to just write it in terms of pascals. So I write it in terms of gigapascals. So these numbers are given in terms of billions of pascals, billions of newtons per square meter. All right, so let's say that I wanted to answer a question. How much pressure is required to produce a 1% decrease in volume of a sample of water? All right, so I got a 1% decrease in volume. Now, one nice way to think about the bulk modulus is that that's the pressure required to give me a 100% decrease in volume. Now, that's actually an incorrect statement because if I'm going to do a 100% decrease in volume, then the thing's not going to be there anymore. So the assumptions that I've made in defining this bulk modulus are actually not valid when the change in volume is that big. But it's a useful way to think about it because if I think about the bulk modulus as the amount that I need for a 100% decrease, then the amount that I need for a 1% decrease is just going to be 1% of the bulk modulus. And that's exactly the way that it goes. So if I want to know the pressure, I'll say delta P equals 0.01, 1% times B. And then I'll just write it out. So it'll be 10 to the minus 2 times and the bulk modulus for water is 2.2 gigapascals. So it'll be 2.2 times 10 to the 9 pascals. And then I'll just multiply and I'll get 2.2 times 10 to the 7 pascals. Right? Or 22 million pascals. And so that's the answer to that problem. Now, just thinking about bulk modulus, if somebody gives you the bulk modulus of a material, essentially what they're doing is they're telling you how hard it is to change its volume, how hard it is to compress it. The bigger the bulk modulus, the more difficult it is to squeeze those molecules together. So we can see from this table that diamond is very, very, very difficult to squeeze together and so it has a very large bulk modulus. All right, so that's bulk modulus. Enjoy.